Hello, dog lovers, and happy uh, Tuesday evening. Hope you're doing well. Uh, in this live video, I'm going to teach you and show you and train you how to teach your dog and train your dog the leave it command. You're going to learn all that. Plus, I'm going to show, uh, ask your dog related, uh, answer your dog related questions as well. So feel free to ask your dog question, dog related questions, um, and I'll answer them right away. So in this in this live video, we're going to talk about the leave it command. Leave it command is a command that you know many of you have asked me. Uh, how do I teach my dog uh, this command? My puppy and my dog, uh, and I'm going to show you and teach you in this live video. I'm going to show you uh, how to train a puppy and also an adult dog. I'll also show you examples. Uh, and let me just get rid of this part. I'll also show you some examples that you can see and we can test each other and figure out uh, why we are doing this and how to use it, um, this command. So, the way I'm going to teach you um, is I'm going to teach you in a way that you're going to learn one word, one command, uh, a word of no, that you're going to replace uh, all the negative words that you've been using until now. Okay? It reduces all the negative uh, negativity in your, from your life and the stress and the frustration that you're going to be dealing with this uh, with your dog. Basically, it replaces all these words. When we when I teach you, I'm going to teach you a word that you can use it and why you can use this word instead of all these words. Stop it. Drop it. Don't do it. Off. Um, get down, stop running, stop digging, leave it. Uh, there's some um, uh, words missing. It's just that I quickly prepared this uh, presentation. So first of all, you're going to learn how to do all this. <coughs> Sorry. Sahar Sagir, Sagari is saying hi, Saro. Hi, so Sahar. Thank you for being here. So what we're going to learn in this live video session is you're going to learn to replace all these words with one word. You're going to replace it with no. Remember, when you're saying leave it or no or stop it or don't do it, these are all negative words that you're using because your dog has your dog or your puppy has done something wrong right so you're correcting your puppy or dog your or you're punishing your dog when you're saying that word that whatever you're saying stop it don't do it hey don't you when you're saying those that those words you're either correcting your puppy your dog or you're punishing so remember the word that I'm going to teach you, it's not a punishment or it's not a correction, okay? You're going to, you will not need to correct your dog often. When you teach your dog this command, you're not going to be needing to correct or punish your dog anymore because you, you're not going to be needing to do that because when you are telling your dog, to stop that behavior, your dog is going to understand. It will be easier for your dog to learn what is supposed to do and what is not supposed to do. And when you do teach this command of uh, leave it, which you're going to replace these words with something else, you're going to have not only easier time, but you're going to have an, uh, an uh, your dog is going to have an easier time to learn as well. So what is this word that I'm talking about? The word that I'm talking about is, is a word that many dog owners may be feeling a little bit uncomfortable to use. When you say no to your dog, 
I'm, I'm sure you feel bad saying no to your dog. You feel like you're punishing your dog. You're saying, um, oh, it's negative. But on the other side, you know, when you your dog or your puppy does something wrong, what do you do? You say, stop it. Hey, don't do it. Stop digging. Stop chewing. That is worse than saying no, actually. All those words are worse than saying no to your dog. So what you want to do is understand that no, in a way, is not a, uh, is not a negative word if you use it properly. So we have Sahar and also we have Teresa is in the house. Thank you for being here. Uh, and we're talking about how to correct your puppy or your dog, or just you know saying uh, to your puppy, uh, leave it. How to train your puppy, leave it. So uh, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel if you're new here, and you have also uh, hit the bell icon as well, so you will be notified as soon as I post my next video or if I go live. So. We're talking about how to teach your puppy the leave it command, right? So the leave it command, it will be easier for you if you, um, let me just qu quickly correct this because it's bothering me. Uh, if you use the right word at the right time, If you use the right word at the right time, you're you're gonna get better benefits of it of it, of it. Um, so okay, so you're you know instead of saying no to instead of saying all these words, I want you to replace it with one word. The reason for that is because we wanna reduce the stress level of you and your dog when you're trying to correct or manage your dog. When your puppy or your dog is doing something wrong, if you approach it with any of these words, these words are associated with negative energy, with anger, with hate, with some form of negative uh, emotion attached to it. So, for example, if your dog, puppy or dog has picked up the remote control, what do you do? You say, hey, drop it. So there is that negative energy that comes out of you. Whether you want it or not, you're saying that, right? If your puppy or dog gets on the couch or uh, on the table, what do you say? You say, get down. Hey, stop it, right? Stop it. Stop it. Leave it, right? It's all negative. So all these words are negatively associated to the uh, task that you're trying to um, get results from. So we're going to replace all these words with one word, which is the word no. And many of you may think that the word no is a negative word when we are using it. But in general, it's, it's not the word that it makes it negative is the emotion that you attach to it, it becomes a negative association for you and the dog. So if you're angry and you say no, obviously that would be negative. If you're stressed and frustrated and you say no to your dog, obviously you're going to be associating negative uh, um, emotions to that word. So in a way, you're not... Um, you're not using this word to punish or correct your dog. You're using this word to teach your dog. So whether you have a puppy or an adult dog, in the beginning of the process of teaching this to your dog, what you're doing, you're starting to teach to your dog. You're not having any expectations from your puppy or your dog. So. There are a few periods that you, you and um, times that you're taking your time and you're going through this process to uh, get to the point that you get results from the word that you're using, which is no. So the first period is the teaching period. This 
this is the period that you're actually teaching it to your puppy or your dog, the association with the word no. This may take a week, it may take a month, it may take a few months. It depends on uh, how long and how you do it and how long you in, in invest in uh, teaching it to your dog. The second period is the learning period. The lear learning period is actually uh, different than teaching period. The teaching period is you teaching to your dog. The learning period is the period that your dog is starting kind of to learn what you're saying and what it means. The third period is the expectation period. The expectation period is the period that you start expecting to have some form of results out of that um, teaching that you're, you have provided to your dog and you hope that your dog has learned it, now you're expecting to get some results, right? So each of these periods may take a week, may take a month, may take a few months. It depends on how you're approaching this teaching period, the learning period, uh, how you're teaching, how much time are you investing to teach it, and how are you doing it in general. Now, I'm going to show you some videos. We're going to go through these, and you're going to learn what I really mean. Um, so here's my dog, my senior dog. Okay, so let's start with my senior dog. Are we not? <laughs> so there, that was an example, okay? So my senior dog, he had the ball in his mouth, and I said no, and he dropped it. So no becomes replacement for drop it in this case, okay? So let's watch the next video, and let's see if you can guess what I'm trying to teach in this So lesson. here's an example. She's on the couch. I don't want her on the couch. Honey, no. Yeah. It's not that hard, you know. Here, I can invite her. And if I want her to get off, honey, no. Honey, no. Yeah. I mean, they figure it out. They learn. They understand. It's that quick for them to respond. It's that simple for them to learn. And it's so simple for me to just use that word. Okay. So here, there was another example of me teaching my puppy to get off the couch. If my, your puppy gets on the couch, instead of saying get off the couch, you just say no. So no replaces all those words. And it teaches the dog to respond to one word. The reason I like to use one word for everything is because it makes it so much easier for the dog, for your puppy to learn how to live um, with humans, how to respond to certain things of humans. When you introduce too many words, stop it. Don't do it. Drop it. Off. Don't pull. Stop pulling. Stop nagging. Stop whining. You, 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 when you teach all these words, it makes sense to us. It makes sense to humans because we are very verbal. Communicative. Communicative. communicative we are very communi communicative animals, humans. But for a puppy or for a dog who, first of all, doesn't speak human language, it's very complicated. It's very confusing to teach them several words and expect them to give you that result that you want. So let's watch another video and let me know, tell me what do you think I'm trying to teach here. So here I have some treats, 
This is not treat training. This is using treats to teach the dog if something falls, don't touch it. Nope. So food falls, don't just go for it. Okay. So then, nope. Good girl. Okay, so there was another example of me uh, talking, teaching, um, uh, teaching like you know, controlling its in its, uh, its wants and getting distracted with food, especially if, for example, if you have food on the table or on, in the kitchen and falls off the table or something, or even. You, you can use this when you're walking your puppy or your dog and there's food on the ground and your dog comes across a food and you see that it's going for it, you can say no and stops your puppy or dog from going and attacking that food. So no will replace leave it in this case, right? So there are a few more. Let's watch the now, next one. If your dog is pulling on the leash, I'm going to ask Annie to pull on the leash. Annie, this way. Good girl. Let's see, door. Hello. This way. Good girl. No. Damn it. So it's. No, don't pull on the leash. No. Nope. As soon as I say no, she corrects herself and stop. So there was another example of using no for walking uh, scenario. Okay, you're walking your puppy or your dog, and you want to teach it not to pull on the leash or not to drag you or not to run. You just say no, and it teaches the puppy or the dog to control itself and not to do it. So it, in this case, I'm using no for don't pull. Stop pulling the leash. Uh, don't drag me, okay? Improves a lot of behaviors. This one, the next one is very interesting. So here's food, barbecue on the table, burgers on the table. And you know? Here's my other dog comes. So there it is. So again, controlling that uh, temptation of the puppy or the dog to want to you know, get on the table table surfing or counter surfing, right? So, so far, am I making sense? Are, are you getting some value out of this video that we are working on? Uh, if you do, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, uh, and let me know what you think and how, how you're feeling so far in the, in the chat area and in the comment area. And uh, let me just uh, take a look. Um, everything is going well. Okay, so we'll continue. And I'm going to answer your questions uh, soon, uh, as soon as I'm done with this presentation. So how do we teach a puppy uh, the word no? How do we correct them? How do we teach them to get started to uh, respond to this cue? So let's watch this video now. So in this case, I have Annie, and I'm playing with Annie with her one of favorite toys. I usually take out this toy when we are training, and uh, I want to make sure that this toy is a little bit valuable to to her. So I have practiced a little bit of uh, board no with her in the past week, uh, where whenever I've caught her doing something that I don't want her, like chewing and doing things that it's unwanted, I've told her no, and she's kind of familiar with it, right? So I'm gonna 
demonstrate now. So I'm going to ask Annie. No. Good girl. Yes. So, so she stops right away as soon as I tell her no. So this is a good start to teach your puppy the word no. So eventually your puppy is going to connect the word no with all other unwanted bad behaviors. So Annie, no. Good girl, yes. And then the reward. So this is why I use play and praise as a reward system because you see we're playing, right? And I'm saying, Annie, no. Nope. And then I praise. So play and praise, right? Good girl for stopping this behavior. And then I reward her. So later on, if she's playing with a toy like that, or she's grabbed something that I don't want, uh, I can kind of say now, Annie, no. Nope. Yeah. Good girl. Yes. So she stops that action. So the no becomes uh, stop that behavior right away, right? So eventually, let's say in a month or so, if she is behaving really bad, I can just say no and she'll stop. If I'm teaching her a behavior and she's not getting it and she's doing the wrong way, I can say no and she's going to correct herself. So this is all uh, now we are preparing her for future. So Annie, no, sit. Good, sit. There you go. Yes, good girl. Yes, good girl. Good girl. Now we play. I and mean, if I want her to stop, Annie, no, no. So there, I'm just teaching her, don't go after it. It wasn't 100%, but it's a good start. So as you can see, my no is not aggressive. It's not angry. It has no feelings attached to it. It's just a firm, clear no. So this is how you're going to teach your puppy a two word that you are comfortable to use and teach your puppy the Q word to stop that unwanted behavior. If you missed my previous video, go ahead and watch that video. I'm going to link it over here and also down below in the description. I'm creating a puppy training series. You're welcome to join and watch the whole series. To make sure that you're getting all the videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon as well. So you will get notified as soon as I post those videos. And if so you're getting the point, right? So that's how we teach a puppy how to re re start learning and respond to word no. That's the beginning, right? So remember, there's a learning process period, there's, there's teaching period, there's learning period, and there's the expectation period. This is the learning period. If you have a puppy or you have an adult dog, you want to teach it, you start with the learning period. That the, during the learning period, you, you you wouldn't have any expectations. What I mean by that is you you're not expecting your puppy or your dog to respond to the word no because you're teaching it, right? You're you're teaching it, and your puppy or your dog is starting to figure things out. If I do this, this is what I hear. If I don't do that, this is what I'm going to hear. So that's how you, um, that's how you start teaching your puppy. So for me, it took me, I would say, two three weeks to for my puppy to associate no with. I have to stop this behavior. Each dog, each person is different. You may get better results than me. Maybe you get it in a week. Maybe in a few days. Maybe you. You may get it in a month. It, it doesn't matter how long it takes. Don't uh, don't uh, make it a competition. Who's going to learn faster? It's not about how fast you're learning. It's a matter of how much time you're investing to teach it. So teaching period could be any time between two, three days to two, three months. And then you go to learning period. So this is, the next video is an adult dog. And this is how I use play and praise to teach this dog uh, the word no. 
So as I said, Bella loves balls. So as you can see, she's got really excited seeing this ball. She's also excited because I have her food in here. So uh, first, we're going to start with the ball. Okay. So we first, we're going to start with the toy that your dog really loves. So let me show you how crazy she is for the ball. She just loves to play this game. So. I'm going to use this opportunity that she really loves to play this game, and I'm going to teach her some manners as well. So not only we're playing, we're, I'm using praise as well, and I'm going to teach her also some manners. So I'm going to just play with her for a few minutes. Bella, drop it. So the reason I said drop it because she doesn't know for her to have some fun. Drop it. She still doesn't know the word no. I have I haven't started the learning. So period. as you can see, she's really into the, this game and into this toy and into this ball. Okay, so I'm gonna use and teach her to stop being obsessed with this ball. So the way I'm gonna teach her to do this is I'm gonna use her name, which is Bella. And I'm going to use the word no. Now, many people find it hard to say no to their dogs. But I don't find it hard to say no to dogs. Because, again, it doesn't come from a negative part of my mind and soul and my heart. It's coming from positive part. I don't mean hard. I don't mean any negativity. All I mean is love and all the good stuff. Okay? So, now... I have the ball that she really loves, right? So, as you can see, she, if I let her, she's going to get it. So now I'm going to say, Bella, no. No. Good girl. Okay. So as soon as she stops, I say, good girl, and I let her play. So when I don't want her to touch it, Bella, no. Bella, no. Good girl. Go get it. So she gave me a second of pause there, and I just praised her with the ball, with kicking the ball. So again, Bella, no, nope. no, nope. good girl. A little bit longer, reward, okay? So in this case, as you can see, we're playing, but she has no idea that she's getting trained. So this is the key, you wanna, implement this behavior, this technique in everyday life, in everyday activity that you're doing with your dog. Whatever it is that your dog is obsessed with, you can take it and use it and practice it in home. Bella, no, no, good girl. A little bit longer, good girl, okay, all right. And just practice it every day with your dog until your dog gets the point that no means stop that behavior. So here we go. I'm going to tease her a little bit more. No. 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 Good girl. There we go. I, I did a little bit more than usual. So she's getting the point that, okay, no means don't touch the ball. Don't get too obsessed with the ball. So this is the part. You put, you want to play it properly. So she stops, relaxes, reward. Okay? And then when it's time to correct, no. But I know. No. Good girl, good girl, good girl, all right? So you can do this as often as you can. You can play with your dog every day, uh, not more than 15 minutes anyways. But I've used this technique also in, we run a doggy daycare, we have 20, 35 dogs a day, and we use the same technique with all these dogs. They all are familiar with the word no, and we can manage and control these dogs in this environment. So now that I have introduced her with the, the, the verbal cue of no, I'm going to also 
uh, use it in other activities that we do with her. So here I have her food. So I don't want her to touch it, right? So I'm gonna put, so, nope. Good girl, nope. Nope. Good girl. Nope. Good girl. Nope. So there we go. So now she's getting the, the idea that no means don't do what you're about to do. Again, it doesn't, it's not hard and it's not harming the dog. It's not harming us, the relationship. And you can, you know, I'm just going to push a little bit further. Nope. Right, so no has become no, no, Bella, no, no, so no, so you're thinking, why am I not rewarding her since she's doing it? Because she's getting it, no, you don't have to complicate things, just make them learn one thing and then praise them. So she has learned that no now means don't do it, then reward. You don't have to reward every single time. That becomes too much of everything. So, so Bella here, no, Bella, no. So she made a mistake, she took it. So that means that we have to work, no, good, good. We have to work more. So this is the reality of dog training. It's not magic, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of repetitions, a lot of training until you get the results that you want. So Bella, one more time, sit, nope, good girl, okay, good girl. So things like this, you can do every day, you're living with your dog anyway, so take advantage of it and just teach them this simple no. So when it's the time that you really need your dog to uh, stop a behavior, your dog is at least familiar with the cue. So this is the follow-up of the video that I did last time. And if you have missed watching that video, I'm going to link it right here. You can go ahead and watch that video as well. This is how simple it is. So nope. Good girl. Okay. Bella, nope. Good girl, right? So you can do this exercise as much as you can and just implement this in your daily life with your dog. Every day, just teach them you know what that means. So when your dog is now, let's say, is barking at the neighbors or is pulling you on the leash, at least you can say, Rover, no. And Rover is kind of familiar with it, with the cue. Oh, I'm making a mistake. We've done this before with different games, with different situations, in different conditions. And yes, practice this in different environments, you know, backyard and on the street. Practice this. So when you have done about 500 repetitions of this with your dog, or even thousands of repetitions, then you can expect your dog to respond when it's making a mistake, when it's doing something wrong, is barking or pulling you on the leash or growling or anything like that. You can say, Rover, no. Rover is going to at least be familiar with the cue and stop that behavior. And you can at least control and manage your dog. And then when your dog maybe is calm, then you can train or teach your dog something. Hope you like this video. Hope it makes sense. Please let me know if you have any. So enjoyed so far. Are you enjoying the show so far? So this is why I'm trying. The, the purpose of teaching all these to your dog is to get them to respond to it. So again, one more time, I want to show you this video. So here's an example. She's on the couch. I don't want her on the couch. Honey, no. No. It's not that hard, you know, here, I can invite her, and if I want her to get up, honey, no, honey, no, I mean, they figure it out, they learn, they understand, it's that quick for them to respond, 
it's that simple for them to learn and it's so simple for me to just use that word so hopefully you're getting the point right so the idea here is for us um, to understand that the when we are using words like no and or many other words when we are using many other words we are confusing our dogs right we are making them to uh, be over get overwhelmed with many many words so what i want you to understand that we just replace it with one word which is no and you have to go through this teaching period which is few weeks or few months and then the learning period which you kind of hope that your dog is your puppy is getting it and then you expect them to give you the results that you want so hopefully this gave you some idea of how to uh, teach your dog the leave it command not only i taught you how to teach your dog the leave it command i covered all the words that you will or you are using <laughs> uh, associated with your puppy or your dog so instead of saying leave it instead of saying drop it instead of saying uh, don't do this don't do that uh, stop pulling and all that you're just replacing it with one word does it make sense if it's making sense give me a like uh, let me know if you get the point and you understand it and uh, if it's making sense and i will answer your questions related to this topic for, or any other topic so let's get started on going through uh, your questions and uh, your thoughts and your comments so sahari is in the house teresa is in the house thank you for being here uncle Zay Zay is uh, in the house. I need help with a paw, with paw, uh, and you, such a dog trainer, good, oh, good dog trainer. Uh, is it possible that I can teach a dog paw without treats? I think you're, you mean by um, teaching a, your dog shake a paw without treats. It is possible, but I'm not, I personally don't invest time in teaching tricks and things like that just because I, I just don't uh, don't find it don't find it very interesting personally you know I, I'd rather teach other things to my dog challenging things uh, maybe behavioral things rather than tricks uh, but you can you can teach and you know one of the things that I always say to or dog lovers is don't think that I'm saying don't use treats at all. I'm saying don't use treats for training purpose. Shake a paw, for example, is a trick, is a trick training. <clears throat> for that, you could use treats if you want, you know, but if, if you are teaching a behavior to your dog, you see, shake a paw is not a behavior. You're not teaching a behavior. You're teaching a trick that you want to see your dog to do. But if you're teaching a behavior, for example, if you're saying don't bark, uh, don't attack another dog, uh, don't kill another dog, or don't dig, if you're teaching a behavior that there is some form of negative association with you and the results that you get, you know, barking, it require it means you're getting a negative results out of your dog and you want your dog to stop the barking. If you include treats in that purpose, you're not using the proper tool or proper, proper uh, approach. Whereas shake a paw trick is a behavior that you're building it in a behavior you're teaching the dog to do something that is unusual for the dog to do. But let's say not barking at other dogs or not lunging at people or other dogs, it's an unusual behavior. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a behavior that 
it's unwanted, it's a, a negative behavior. And if you include treats in that format, you're teaching your dog to associate that behavior with treats and food, which has a different uh, meaning to the dog. So for tricks, I wouldn't mind using treats. Sometimes I use it if I see that my dog is having a hard time to learn certain trick, you know. Um, but you are, you can use tricks. You, you don't have to use treats to use tricks. You know what I mean? Um, let me see if I can show you that video. But what I'm going to do, I, I have I have to do a video about this, and I'm going to post it in future in my channel. Uh, but yes, you could use to you could use treats to use your dog the trick of shaker paw. Uh, you don't have to try using your dog's favorite toy or game. Uh, the same thing, if you want your, for example, your puppy or your dog to bring its paw up, what would you do if you want to do that? You know, think of, of the process. How would you go through the process of teaching your dog to shake a paw, right? Lifting and shaking a paw, right? Uh, you can't, you have to use, if you think that you have to use treats, replace the treat with your dog's toy or your energy. See, the, the, the challenge or the excitement or the reward is you spending time to figure out how to do it. It's not a matter of your dog doing the shake a paw. In my opinion, it's not a matter of shaking a paw, teaching the dog to do that. It's a matter of the time that I'm spending with my dog or my puppy to invest, to figure out how my dog learns, how my dog, how my dog associates certain things that I'm asking, how can I get my dog to do this? That time that I'm spending with my puppy or dog to figure it out is more valuable than the trick itself. I hope I'm making sense. If I'm making sense, give it a like. <laughs> By the way, uh, if you're new here or if you're a repeat member, please make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the like subscribe button right there. Hit the bell icon as well. So you will get notified as soon as I post my next video if I go live. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell, hit the bell icon and also uh, like button as well. Uh, Sahar's giving a thumbs up. B. Jackson is giving a thumbs up. Uh, Mike Dolan. Hi, Sarah. We have a three year old male or Irish wolfhound mix. Uh, very good. That's good to know. I'm not seeing the question, but it's good to see a three year old male Irish wolfhound mix. Interesting dogs, interesting breed. Uh, Dickie Kelsey, I have a Poodle who is hyper every time I take her out. I want to teach my dog to not be hyper when going out for walks and also walk next to me. Uh, the thing is, when when it comes to situations like this, so I just we went through the teaching how to teach a dog uh, correction, right? Correction or leave it or how to stop our dog from doing certain behavior. So no is your verbal cue that you can use to stop your dog from, your poodle from getting excited. So that's one. But the process of Im improving the walk in general um, is oh i see that you have he's very hyper when i take her out and walk eating everything she sees and also wants her wants to i want her to walk next to me. okay so 
when it comes to improving these issues that you're having with your dog, right? One of the things is that I'd rather not to take my dog out for a walk until I have some form of control over my dog. I'd rather sacrifice the walk than having a horrible walk. I'd rather do some homework, some work on my dog until I have some control over my dog to take it out for a walk to get some results from my dog rather than just going for a walk, just for sake of the walk and getting crappy walk results. So I'd rather replace and sac sacrifice the crappy walks with not walking. So I will give you the permission not to walk your dog as a dog trainer. I will give you the permission not to walk your dog because I'd rather see you succeed rather than get frustrated and not have good results out of your walk. So I suggest you for the next week, two weeks, a month, invest in improving the walk rather than going for a walk. If your dog has to go for a walk or you have your dog has to do its business outside, just take it outside, let it do its business, come back. It's better not to, uh, in a way, put the kid in a candy store and expect to get results. You can't put a kid in a candy store and say, you know what, don't touch the candies. If you put the kid in a candy store, it's it will be very difficult for that kid not to touch the candies. So if you put the dog in an environment that it gets uh, stimulated, uh, stressed and anxious and extra hyper by seeing things and touching the things and seeing things moving, if it gets overwhelmed, it's better not to put it in that situation at first. So what you're going to do, you're going to in, improve the walk at home. Uh, if you're living in the house, you're going to practice inside of the house, uh, in your backyard for the next week or a month. Just don't go outside. <clears throat> if you're living in a building, practice it in your uh, apartment or in your apartment building's hallways or in your apartment building's parking lot. Practice walking and improving the walking in those environments rather than uh, going outside. Now, the, the way you're going to do, the one of my uh, most important tip that I can share is don't step out of the door until you have a calm dog. This is very important for you to understand, okay? If your dog is hyper and you open that door and your dog steps out of that door, you lose the, the war, okay? So instead, I want you to bring your dog's hyper, high energy level and that excitement from whatever it is to zero before you step out the door. That would be my top-notch tip. How do you do it? I just posted a link in the chat area, uh, improve the walk. The link is called improve the walk. Watch those videos, learn how to improve the walk. I'd rather you succeed having a good walk or so-so good walk rather than a crappy walk that your dog gets stresses you. You don't get good uh, experience out of the walk. Your dog doesn't get good experience out of the walk as well. Uh, B. Jackson, he says, I have a five-year-old beagle. Five-year-old. By the way, my beagle, Harvey, is turning that one. It's turning 10 tomorrow, so it's his birthday tomorrow, and we're going to have a lots of party and cake. Mommy is baking a cake for him. Uh, Uncle Zay Zay, he said, I got a Lassa poodle, and he's 11 in human race years. So I'm guessing two years, two-year-old. 
Tom. And he, he has a yes. B. Jackson, awesome, thank you. You are very welcome. Mike Dolan, makes sense to me. That's great. Uh, I hope you, uh, you're talking about the presentation. I'm glad that it does make sense to you. And Mike Dolan has a question. I wanted to know how I can train the dog to play with other dogs off leash. Uh, outdoors. Um, the way you're going to uh, train, you can't really train. You have to teach your dog to walk, to play off leash outdoors. You have to, first of all, improve the, the connection that you have between you and your dog so you can trust to off-leash your dog. That, that is number one. If you can't trust off-leashing your dog, I'd rather, again, not to off-leash your dog and let it do crazy stuff than off-leashing your dog and let it either make mistakes or run away and get lost or something happens to your dog. So safety is number one. The, for safety's sake, I would suggest to make sure that you have improved your dog's off-leash um, abilities so you're, you can trust to off-leash your dog. <clears throat> if you don't trust your dog to be off-leash, then I'd rather not to off-leash your dog for time being until you build that, uh, that te the techniques and build that uh, energy that you can off-leash your dog. That may take a month, that may take a year. So that's one of the things that I always say to my dog uh, lovers is that you can off-leash your dog if you're, you feel that the environment or the dogs that you're exposing your dog outdoors are safe. If the environment is fenced, for example, if it's a fenced park and there are safe dogs for your dog to play with, then you can off-leash it. If you don't feel that the environment is safe, which means it's not fenced, your dog may take off. If you feel that your dog may take off, if you feel that your dog may go and not come back when you're calling it, it's better not to off-leash. And if, you, if the dogs that you're involving your dog to play with, if you feel that they are not safe, they may harm your dog, they may hurt your dog, they may attack your dog, they, then it's better not to do so. If you feel that your dog may attack another dog also, that also applies. You shouldn't be off-leashing that dog. So... The, o the only time that you can off-leash your dog if it's, if it's a safe environment and safe dogs, other than that, work on improving to get your dog to be off-leash ready. Now, what I mean by that is there's a process that you have to take, go through and steps that you need to take uh, that it will help you to get there. It all depends on how you train your dog, how you got your dog to get to listen to you, if it responds to you, uh, and if it's um, reliable. So what you want to do is go through this process. The first few months, you're working on a six-foot leash right, a six-foot leash, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for a few months. And then if you feel that your dog is able to walk properly on a six-foot leash with you, and it's not pulling you on the leash, is doing great, is not misbehaving, is not reacting, then you go to the next level, which is extend, extend, extending the leash. You go to a longer leash. If your dog is on a six-foot leash and it's still reactive and it's not listening to you and it's not uh, is uh, is 
uh, pulling on the leash and all that, then you have to improve the walk, the leash walk. So it's better to go start from leash walking to off leash walk first. Uh, so you improve the leash walk first, and then if you see that it's walking properly, then you extend the leash to, uh, you get a 30 foot, 35 foot leash, but you start with 10 foot, and then if it's walking properly, you extend it to 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. You just keep giving to your dog. So your purpose and your goal is to see if your dog is behaving the same way as would be on a six foot leash. If you off leash your dog and your dog takes off, that, that means it's not ready to be off leashed yet. If you off leash your dog, you unclip the leash and your dog stays there, that means your dog is ready. And you go through this process of leash, short leash, long leash, and then off leash training that, till you get to that point that you can off leash your dog. And when you do that, when you go through that process, um, then you can say, you know what, I can off leash my dog now uh, with, with feeling that uh, my dog is going to be safe and it's going to be okay, right? And therefore, you can off leash your dog to go and play with other dogs. So what I want you to do is um, watch the video that I'm posting in the chat area of leash walk. Uh, I explain a little bit more there. So hopefully that will help you. Uh, Dicky Kelsey said, got it, thank you. You are very welcome. Elizabeth Caruso, my mini poodle has retained almost all of his body teeth and now has his adult teeth. He just started refusing to eat his food from his bowl, uh, but will lick it out of my hand. Could this be teeth related? Um, I do, I, from what I know, uh, Elizabeth, isn't your mini polo like eight months old? Somewhere around there. Uh, if, if it's that, if that's the case, if it's trying to eat liquid from you, what I want you to do is probably you're feeding it too much or is eating, is being fed too often. Um, <clears throat> try to feed twice a day. Uh, you put the food down, let's say in the morning, and you leave it for five minutes. If your puppy eats it, fine. If it doesn't, you put it away and you feed it in the evening. This is very common in many dogs, actually. Most, uh, sometimes some dogs, they don't feel hungry. They don't feel like they want to eat, right? Uh, and we can't force them to eat. You know, just because they don't eat, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with them and there's something going on. It's just literally they don't feel like eating. So put the food away and see if the, if your puppy is going to eat it next time. Uh, if it's licking the food, your hand and ball and things like that, that means it's not very hungry, right? Maybe the other tip that I have is, see, I always suggest dog owners to focus on this. Focus on providing exercise, training, socialization, and then care, and also then after that affection. The reason this formula works this way, because a dog who hasn't had exercise, physical exercise and stimulation, and mental stimulation won't be hungry, won't be stimulated to eat. Naturally, that's how dogs are. If you don't provide them exercise, proper amount of exercise and proper amount of training and socialization, which are mental stimulation, the care, which is the food, for instance, they don't feel that they need to eat. 
So provide exercise, you know, maybe provide training, exercise, play, walking, uh, and then training a little bit, and then offer the food. See if your puppy is going to eat it. That would be my, those two would be my um, tips so far. Um, apply those and let me know what you, what you get. So yes, one is try to feed when your puppy is hungry. You know, if it doesn't eat within five minutes, put the food away. You don't have to let it lick your finger or anything like that because then they get used to it. Um, the other thing is provide exercise training, socialization, and then care. That would be my suggestion. I'm planning on having them extracted. Usually you don't have to do the teeth. Are you talking about the teeth? You don't have to do it. It will automatically naturally will come off. If you walk around your house, you're going to find teeth, you know, loose teeth all over the place, especially if your puppy is playing with his toys. Uh, around the toys, you'll find some um, loose teeth. And Mike Dolan is saying thanks. Sorry. You are welcome. All right. We reached the end of the live show today. Hope you enjoyed this presentation and Q&A as well. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel, first of all. Let me just remind you one more time. R subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon as well and click on all notifications so you will get notified as soon as I post my next video or if I go live, which at the, at the moment, the next live would be on Friday, the, uh, May 22nd at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Next, would you click the like button as well. So make sure to share some love uh, with the video as well. And if you have any questions that I didn't get to answer during the live session, make sure to answer them in the comments area or read them all, uh, answer them all. And hope you enjoyed this live session. Hope you're having a good day. Hopefully we'll go back to normal very soon. And We'll be able to enjoy our dogs and our community normally as we used to. And I will see you on Friday, May 22nd at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until next time, have fun with your dog.